and welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube for some mono white life gain in historic. We're going to be playing best of one with this donation deck and it's going to be doing exactly what, what we're saying. We're going to be trying to gain life as fast as possible. That's that's the the name of the game for us. The reason why we want to gain a lot of life are payoffs. We have Sarah Ascendant, that if we have 30 or more life, Sarah Ascendant is a 6-6 flying lifelink creature. That can end games pretty fast. It's pretty difficult to race a 6-6 flying lifelinker. That's a big reason. We, of course, have Resplendent Angel each turn whenever we gain 5 life. Then we get to create a 4-4 four, four, um, Angel, and that's each end step. So that could be my opponent's end step or my end step. Either one there. And the other one that that is uh, really awesome is this a Johnny Strength of the Pride, the zero ability. If we can do the zero ability, and then we have at least 15 more life than our starting life total, so we get up to 35, then we exile a Johnny and each artifact and creature of the opponent's control. So we can just drop, if we have 35 life, we can just drop a Johnny, zero, exile their whole board, and swing in for a lot of damage. So even though we're a life gain deck, we're also a pretty aggressive deck. Of course, a Johnny's Pride Mate can hit really hard, of course. But we were talking about Sarah Ascendant. Um, but besides that, we got we got angels, and you know, so we're gonna hit with flying angels. Angel of Vitality is always just a two-two, but allows us to gain more life. But like I said, Resplendent Angel can hit hard. Lyra can uh, pump up these angels also. Sarah Ascendant is not an angel, if you're wondering that. Uh, Bishop of Wings help us gain even more life with the angels. We got this combo. Um, whenever our angel enters, we gain four life. Um, so we got this this combo here, and if they kill our angels, we make a spirit. We don't have a lot of card advantage. We're not really trying to play a late game. We're just trying to gain a lot of life and hit hard. Um, one card that we were talking about uh, that maybe could fit in here is Dawn of Hope. As you can see, this is a very generic deck list of just like all four ofs everywhere. Um, we could uh, we could probably fit in a couple of Dawn of Hopes um, with like Angel of Vitality and Bishop of Wings being um, they're they're very good synergy cards that like whenever you whenever you have Bishop of Wings with angels it's awesome but when you have Bishop of Wings and no angels this card is just does does absolutely nothing um, you know Angel of Vitality does let you gain an extra life for a lot of things and can get a little bit bigger this one this one's pretty good but Bishop of Wings we could maybe fit in a Dawn of Hope or two here um, but that that's something we're gonna play some games with this list first but that's something to kind of think about the the real thing about Dawn of Hope I guess if you're not familiar with that card it's not about the the second ability, the four mana make a one one. It's about the first part. Whenever you gain life, pay two, draw a card, and then you know that just helps you. You know we have lots of things that that gain life, and each time we can just pay two, draw a card, um, <clears throat> and uh, you know especially like with Soul Warden, um, all, all the time creatures enters, we gain life, we pay two, draw cards, and so we would be able to dig through the the deck with that. So we'll we'll play a couple of games first, like I said with this. We'll see if if that card looks to be necessary. This is a best of one deck, and it's historic. The way to play best of one on historic is a little tricky. This could probably be tailored for best of three also, but it's just it's designed as a, a best of one. That's the donation to play. So the way to play best of one is you actually just go to the play part. You just find a match, play, choose your deck, uh, go to all, not just standard, all decks, mono white, life gain. You just join the queue like that's this is the only way there's no way to play ranked in best of one um so we're just playing <clears throat> some regular old games here oh. Okay. <laughs> we got the grumpy cat and the happy cat. All right, this hand looks pretty angelic. We'll go ahead and keep it. This is where Bishop of Wings is at its best when you play a bunch of angels. The two Lyra Dawnbringers at the top end. Well, not sure, not you know, super confident that we're going to draw three straight lands and you know be able to curve out to Dawnbringer. But still, as long as we draw one land, we have this Bishop of Wings here and then a couple of other angels. 
<clears throat> Aggro is very popular in best of one. There's a lot of mono red and a lot of gruel. And so playing a life gain deck like this um, can be really strong against the aggro decks. But as we talked about against a removal heavy deck, sweepers and stuff like that, we're going to really struggle. But it's just best of one. Best of one, you can't... Well, I say that you can't, but... It's difficult to have a mid-range deck that is really good against control and really good against aggro with just the 60 cards that you're playing. That's usually what sideboards are for. So obviously the card that I want to see the least is Kaya's Wrath. Or just, you know, any Wrath effect. That would count. Yeah, no, 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 nope, no best of one ranked for historic. Right now, yeah, I, I think that it will be added at some point too. Castle Ardenville will have to do a lot of work for us. not gonna play the ascendant we'll play the resplendent angel though kind of force them to have a sweeper because if they don't have a sweeper obviously i have a ton of power in the air so they they went good game i could definitely mean settle we don't we don't have lethal here because of the, the run to the Raven, so it's not like I would... Well, I mean, I guess I could activate Resplendent, but even... No, even if I would activate Resplendent, we wouldn't have lethal because they'd still go to one. So I want to protect against Settle a little bit and only attack with those. Don't... When they say best of one, don't just trust it. But yeah, I mean, they had to have their sweeper. They didn't uh, have a Kai's Wrath, and there we go. Game over. <laughs> uh, yeah, they have Revenge of the Ravens. I'm sure they're a they were a Fires of Invention deck. Uh, you know, a Mardu enchantment. Revenge is. It's not bad when you got fires where you can play multiple things a turn. Play that and something else. This is a hand where Bishop of Wings just looks really silly. You know, it doesn't, it's not doing anything. Zafrin Void, or Zalfrin Void. Forgot about this card. It's not in standard anymore, so I forgot about it. That card is awesome. It's a scry land where your land doesn't come into play tapped. That is cool. This is a pretty easy deck to play if you like easy decks to play. Very straightforward, um, which which is good. Sometimes in Magic, there's a lot like Magic's a really difficult game already. So nothing wrong with playing an easy deck. All right, Weapon Smith kind of actually is. That is kind of scary. With that, that's a lot of ramp. Um, okay. 
So close. So now... Sarah Ascendant is a 6-6 Flying Lifelinker. Why would it have grown if I attacked? What what would have made it grow if I attacked with it? With just the lifelink? Like the one so the one damage of lifelink means it would not have died? Okay. That's a really cool interaction with Sarah Ascendant. I did not realize it worked exactly like that. So we have at least 15 life. More than our starting life totals, we can exile a Johnny and each artifact and creature they control. Welcome back, QQ. Life gain beatdowns. It's a good good description of the deck. Life gain beatdowns. There's my treadmill to the right. If Sarah Sen is dealt damage at the same time that you gain life, most likely because it dealt combat damage to a creature blocking or blocked by it, and your life total becomes 30 or greater, apply its last effect before considering whether or not the damage dealt to it is lethal. So there we go. Yeah, I could have attacked with the 1-1 one, one into the 1-4. And... <clears throat> if it would have taken one damage, but it would have also dealt one life link, which would have put me to 30. Then when it's at 30, it's a 6-6, six, six. so the one damage being applied to a 6-6 six, six does not kill it. Could, I was going to say, this could be a life gain mirror. Those get out of hand. That'll give, that'll give me gain 2 life because of the angel... This will be gain two life. Now we're at 25. Now Angel's a 4-4. Four, four. All right, the control deck. Our downfall. I don't want to play a Resplendent Angel out, and then they binding the Resplendent Angel, and I can't cast the others. So we'll play the other Angel of Vitality. It's a binding one. It's okay. Plus, the Angels are just 4-4s. Or the Vitalities are 4-4s, or Resplendent is a 3-3. Thanks, Moxie. No, I don't think that this this deck really needs Divine Visitation to turn the spirits. Like, you'd have to have... In order for that card to do anything, you'd have to have... Um, Bishop of Wings in play and an Angel in play, and then your Angel dies, and then your Divine Visitation does something. Just not worth it to play cards like that that don't do anything except for under a small circumstance. Uh, 
I just don't really don't want to play one Resplendent Angel and it gets bindinged. If we get one more land, we can go double Resplendent Angel. That's a little better. That is true. Castle Ardenvale would help out Divine Visitation. I still don't think it's a a card that really would be uh, would be an upgrade over anything in the deck. No, control is our difficult deck is our difficult deck to beat. It's good getting a token out of there so they don't get to you know they bounce the conclave tribunal, you know that they don't get it back. You know, they just used a time wipe. <clears throat> Fiery Aspen. Uh, thank you so much for the three-month re-sub. You're awesome. Our first sub of the day. They just used a time wipe on just a one drop. You know, we made two tokens with the Arden Veil. Like, this this tribunal was pretty... Pretty important tribunal, honestly. Getting rid of that 4-4 lifelink, or the 4-4 flying vigilant creature, because it's going to be really hard to get through that. We did not, we not, we did not uh, finish all of Overcooked yesterday. We got to level 5-3. But yeah, that was a lot of fun with Boot, I hope. Hope you all check that out over on YouTube and everything, and watch that over there. I do. A lot of my historic decks are control. Why... Why not one Cleansing Nova and best of one? Because, I mean... I think that the the situations that Cleansing Nova is good is are few and far between. Like the, This is a situation where Cleansing Nova would be awesome. Absolutely. But most of the decks that you're going to play against, that's not the case. This is a... This deck is an anomaly. You don't see very many enchantment... All enchantment removal blue-white control decks. It's going to be difficult to beat Ascanta. I'm not sure Castle Ardenvale can beat Ascanta. Would you rather have a Sunken Ruin or a Castle? Tuck your Ixalan's Binding. If you show remorse, I'll show the strength. Yeah. You know what? I'm not done yet. You had four Cinder Vines to the Gruel deck. Like for best of one or best of three? There, whales. There are so many mysteries. Okay, yeah, cyborg best of three. Yeah. Mind. Yeah, Cinder Vines is an awesome awesome cyborg card for that deck. Uh, 
I have to just hope they don't have another seal away with the two cards that we don't know about. Good. You cannot see your folly. Got to ferry out of there. Yeah, standard and historic do have the same ladder. Um, best of three is how you play historic ranked. Uh, best of one is not ranked. I basically want to activate Castle every single turn. And so I wasn't playing the Bishop of Wings. Until... Until I could still activate Castle. I am not going to sit this one out. <clears throat> How many Wraths do they play? I don't know. Probably like six. Hold that thought. Their, their deck is just designed to beat, like, my deck. It's just designed to beat creatures. That's all That's all their deck does. And then all they do is just win with Teferi. It's very, very effective at beating creature decks. You know, so they're just trying to beat, just play against Gruul. Um, it's... It's not as good as like like Esper and Control Mirrors. It's not as good as other control decks and control mirrors. Because of Because it just has like, you know, basically all creature removal. Um you know, it doesn't have, like, discard and counter magic and stuff like that. I mean, I guess it has a little bit of counter magic. We saw a couple of absorbs. Keep up the pace. I'm known for my excellent timing. I am not making this up as I go. All right, so getting through the four fours are really tough at this point. We kind of need another tribunal. Pretty ready to concede this. Yeah, Pandy. Yeah, Panda, I do. I have room for another donation deck today. I could, um, you can have the, the third or fourth sl slot. I can take off, like, you know, Gruul, Selesnya. I can move those decks. No, a Johnny would not have helped. A Johnny Zero exiles creatures and artifacts, and my opponent just had Planeswalkers and Enchantments. Does not exile all the permanents, only creatures and artifacts. Yeah, donation deck Saturday. Um. Doesn't really matter which one to start with. No, each artifact and creature.
if we draw some angels, this could look really good. Dang. It's a good hand. That's an angel. Um, yeah. We gain four life from Bishop of Wings. Resplendent needs five, but the Vanguard gives us the extra one. So we get the angel, which then gains us four life. Obviously, they have Ember Cleave. It's very obvious. So, how do I make a, a block around Ember Cleave? Most damage they can do is 17. I'm not going to block. I'm not going to be getting enough life to get more angels. Yeah, we just have to do a Johnny. I am a Johnny Goldman. And I we thrive when we support. I do have to keep a Johnny alive, which is going to be a little problematic. That's a good block from, or that's a good attack for me. attack like with all this other stuff that would have been really difficult for me to deal with that attack was very easy for me to deal with and now they're dead it's a very easy attack to deal with that was the exact attack I wanted them to make All right, three and one.
Yeah, that worked out. Not jumping with the angel the first time means we have the two angels the second time to take out their creature and keep a Johnny alive. Hey, what's up, Brainfly? Yeah, work this kind of deck with Heliod. Yeah, Heliod could power it up pretty well too. The bishops have looked really impressive at times. You know, other times it's just a two mana one four, but sometimes it can do a lot. Oh, we already played against this opponent with the Mardu control. Um, yeah, definitely mono black with Grey Merchant for sure. When Theros comes out. I it's not like I would be interested in just one deck. I'm, I'm gonna be playing everything. Hey Jim Cricket, yeah. GG's. Thank you so much. Let's go with Vitality. Um. What would I play in the Mythic Championship Qualifier? I'm not exactly sure. Maybe Abzan Hero. I would definitely want to play something that I had a, a really good matchup or, or like you know, had a really good plan against Jun to sacrifice. That would be that would be the first thing on the docket. You test my patience. I left the Angel of Vitality back because if they got the 3-1 Trampler, I needed to be able to... Friendship feeds the soul. Hmm. Need to be able to um, block with the Angel of Vitality there. All right, Orzov Vampires. Okay. So we got a new donation deck. All right, so Orzov Vampires. I'm struggling a bit deciding what to put into the sideboard. And I'm still not sure on the Icon and Dispark in the main deck. Okay. Cool, Orzov Vampires. Do you want so Panda, do you want the third or the fourth slot? Which slot would you like? Um Third slot? Okay. Thanks, Stealthborn. Thank you. And Rex, awesome. <laughs> Change your name to Lettuce Face. Yeah, that that was a lot of fun with the Overcooked Stream. Glad you glad y'all enjoyed it. Um Alright, so we're gonna be playing Orzov Vampires third. And then we'll have to cut one of the other two cards. I sense the good in your heart.
Um, Revenge of Ravens isn't super popular. It's it's about it's about it's for them. It's about them staying alive, like with the gain one life. It's not really about the damage dealt. I didn't have fifth. I didn't. I didn't have the ability to do Johnny Zero the previous turn, and that would have just gotten rid of their uh, creatures in play. Would not get rid of enchantments. But we didn't have more than fifteen life until I ticked up a Johnny. Okay, so should we, which deck, let's do a poll here. We're only going to have room for one deck today, either Gruul Kiora or Selesnya Knight. So we're going to have to play one of those, we're going to play one of the two decks. We're, we're going to move one deck to tomorrow, okay? So you have 60 seconds, um, type which deck do you want to see played, okay? Uh, would you rather see Kiora or Knights? All right, so wait, wait for the poll to start. I'm just kind of waiting so you can hear the des description. And then either type uh, Kiora or Knights. Which one do you want me to play in the fourth slot? All right. Pull started. We'll play the other deck tomorrow. So do you want the Kiora deck or the Knights deck? Sultai. All right, Kiora twenty five, Knights eighteen. Okay, so we'll move Knights to tomorrow. So many Risen Reefs. So we're at 22. We need to get to 30 for the Sarah Ascendant. I think I trade Vanguard... Or Risen Reef plus Visionary if they want, and then they take five. I'm not trading Sarah Ascendant, but okay, they're just gonna jump. Uh, you play Boros? You play Boros to get Clarion? Cavalier. Uh, no, not really. No, I wasn't. But no, the, over, the question is, did the Overcooked content do real good on YouTube? Not, not really. But I wasn't expecting it to do real good. Um, a lot of, a lot of comments, like a lot of positive comments. People liked it. Uh, but you know, it didn't hit it. You know, it didn't get as many views as like a normal Magic video. You only just got a couple hundred. But um, it wouldn't be like I, I would want to like replace a stream with that. But um, yeah, it was fun. It was fun uh, bonus stuff.
All right, hopefully this works, like y'all say. So did it just do six damage there? Or did it do one damage? I don't, I don't remember how much life they had. It dealt one damage? Okay. It seemed like it seemed like they had more life than this though. Okay, they had twelve life? Okay. That's a really cool really cool interaction. They're kind of killing the wrong stuff, though. Oh, they, they could just do this infinitely? Oh, right. Yeah, they get to just do this infinitely. I was going to say, like, that, that wasn't the creature to kill. Okay, this is really cool. Cavalier of Night, Mirror Entity. Or, like, they, so they both have to be... They both are Mirror Images. They both have to be Mirror Images, which they are. You have to have a Cavalier of Night in play, a Mirror Image in the Graveyard, and a Mirror Image in... This is really cool. So Cavalier has to be in play, a mirror image in the graveyard, and then you cast a mirror image. Because you have to have two mirror images going back and forth, copying a Cavalier of Night. And then you can have the last one be Risen Reef. Oh, I just have it be Risen Reef. Oh, they could, I guess they could just keep on doing this, though, if they want, and just keep on getting a Risen Reef trigger each time. Just have infinite R Risen Reef triggers. Also... Yeah, because they don't have to stop. This is this is pretty awesome. Ah, uh, they stopped. If you're gonna stop, you just get the last one to be reef, right? I guess, but I guess at that point you don't need more reef triggers because you had you already had infinite and you decided decided to stop. Yeah, that was really cool. <laughs> Corridor monitor. They're just playing that so they can they can do the neo form and go grab another mirror entity. Okay, they're gonna neo form in a, a Yara. And there's there's another mirror image. And they just go infinite. Yeah, now they just another mirror image and they go infinite. Okay. This deck's pretty sweet. I could put this deck together. I did not think of mirror image infinite with a Yara. And Risen Reef and stuff. So yeah, I'm just gonna take twenty eight. Uh do they have twenty eight cards in their library though? Yes, they do. Oh, yeah. This this wouldn't be consistent. But against... You know, like, our deck doesn't have... Like, the deck that we're playing right here doesn't have removal, so it get, lets them set up. But, um, yeah. Vis you know, Visionary is awesome. Visionary is a great two-drop to Neoform away. You could have Fibblethip, too. Corridor Monitor. The reason to play Corridor Monitor is because of Vanifar. You know, like, this is this is certainly going to be a deck that's playing Vanifar, right? And so, like, Vanifar can sack and go grab something, and then, you know, you go grab, like, Corridor Monitor, Corridor Monitor. Like, you can... Neo for, or, like, Vanifar can turn a Land of War Elf into a Monitor, and then untap, and then the Vanifar turns the Monitor into a another Mirror Image.
Oh, that's all. Yeah, it's also true. Risen Reef's not a draw trigger, so you don't have to worry about milling out. Because it doesn't draw. So you could do this with zero cards in library. Or, you know, if your opponent was at like 100. So, yeah, this is pretty cool. Yeah, retry. Yeah, your deck. Yeah, your deck's really cool. Yeah, I was just kind of just going through and describing everything that you're doing in here. Yeah, your deck's really cool. Why not concede? Oh, just because I was I was just talking about what what it does and everything. I just hadn't gotten to that point yet. Yeah, I can concede. No, mirror image is or yeah, mirror image is not in standard. Mirror image rotated out. That was M19. Right, four and two. Yeah, I like that too. Like, yeah, letting people pull off their their combos, so they get to enjoy enjoy their deck. Yeah, awesome deck there, Retry. All right, we got a good hand here, especially if we get to attack with the Sarah Sentence, if they don't have, like, blockers for these 1-1 lifelinkers and so we can you know gain life and trigger a johnny's pride mate <laughs> yeah yeah that's that's a good call that Charming Prince, Lumbering Battleman, and Standard has, has definitely needed more. Um, I don't. I probably should have played the Pride Mate here. Honestly, I kind of went to attacks first and realized that afterwards. But, um, should have played this first, though. Tendrils. All right, we're getting there. We're at 24 now. As far as Sarah Ascendant goes. Um, That's a pretty neat party trick. Now they can't kill Sarah Ascendant. How's it been working for you, Retry? Ritual of set. It's rude.
ding, ding. We came close, but the pre Dread Presences are going to take us down. Speaking of decks that you can play in Standard, I think Dread Presence is a card that's going to really be a winner of Grey Merchant being in Standard. Yeah, mono black control is pretty popular in historic. It, it is. It has a lot of good tools in historic, honestly. We can't. This is this is definitely a matchup, or just like this is why we need. This is why the deck needs Dawn of Hope against control decks, because we just don't have... Um, yeah, like, obviously, Arena, these Dread Presences, like, we're, we're very dead. Control decks are just going to be able to defeat this deck almost every time. Really want to play against aggro decks, and we haven't we haven't really been playing against aggro decks. Now, aggro's not dead in Historic. Aggro's very popular in Historic. We haven't gotten paired against it at all, though, but... Leading with Sarah Senate because it's a lifelink creature. Standard aggro is pretty dead in Standard. Not Historic. It's a lot better in Historic. You, you can actually, like, Mono Red and Gruel are, are very good in Historic. You can actually kill people. The cards are good enough. I do think Gruel was the best deck before the bans. You can still argue it being one of the best decks after the bans still. This is definitely some kind of combo deck. Famished Paladin. This is the famished, famished Paladin combo. Well, that's not good. Oh, yeah, Fire's Invention, I'm sure, made this a lot better, too. You get to cast two things, still use your mana to equip. Why, why not play Ugin in a dance of the Mance deck? I mean, I'm sure you can. I'm sure you can. Um, 
All right, it's there. They went and, went and grabbed the Famished Paladin. <clears throat> I don't think there's anything against playing a new game in a dance with the man's deck. Man, so close. I need I need two more life. I can't gain two life. I need to a Johnny Zero. So am I dead the next turn? Whenever you gain life, untap it. Give it haste. How are they? They have to give it lifelink. So they have to have a Clarion in hand. If they can give it lifelink, I'm dead. I'm one mana short from activating Resplendent Angel and winning. I'm two life and one mana short. Alright, do they have Clarion? If they have Clarion, I die. If they don't have Clarion, I probably win. That's their two spells. Yay. I have lost <clears throat> too much. Cause yeah, basically they need to give this life link, because they tap it, do one damage. But then they gain life because it has life links, so, they, so it untaps it, and then they deal one damage, and it keeps on tapping, and they just do infinite damage. That's their combo. <laughs> Thanks, Twitch viewer. Oh, there was the Clarion. They were close. gets us there. Alright, we're going to play one more game. Play nine best of one games here, that being a donation deck. Also, historic games pretty fast. Overall, we had that one really slow control deck game, but...
basically it's just easier to play these one drops you know like find room for them somewhere I'm pretty surprised they just had this spellbreaker be a 3-3 though when I have the 1-4 instead of making it a 4-4 All right, that's fine. Attack. You think I'm a crazy beast? Where do you see my knights? Hmm. That's not great. Ow. Poor Solorn. So I probably need... Alright, so if I tick up, I can gain a good amount of life, but I just have a 2-2, two -two, a 2-2, two -two, and a 1-1. One -one. I probably need a pride mate out here. Can't really keep a Johnny alive without destroying the board, so. Let's trade those. Ooh, castle, castle's real good. Alright, lean in Vanguard. Help us out. Yeah, Giant Killer could be a thing for this deck. Usually the creature matchups are, are one that you're a little more favored in, though. Six and three. Pretty good. Pretty good. So yeah, the, the creature decks, we can just kind of gain enough life and fly over the top, play some good defense. Um, control decks are just gonna be tough. And you know, like that's that's just kind of best of one. Even with Dawn, it's not like you know, you play Dawn of Hopes, then you win. And even with Dawn of Hopes, it'd still be difficult. Um, but that's just a card to kind of think about maybe instead of like one of the angel of vitalities and one of the bishop of wings um, i do have to say the bishop of wings did look better than i expected it worked so well with resplendent angel um yeah those two paired super well together maybe instead maybe like one angel of vitality could be a dawn of hope um you know that's how you could fit that's how you could fit one in there okay but there we go. There's our first donation deck for today. We got two Orzov ones coming up in standard that we're about to do. 
Uh, those of y'all watching on YouTube, let me know if you're playing some mono white life gain yourself. What you think of this archetype? What you think of um, you know Sarah Ascendant and Soul Warden being added to a standard? Um, all right, cool, dude. Deck tech here also, um, and you know Johnny Strength of the Pride with that um, kind of stuff. All right, but there we go. That's mono white life gain. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.